Well guys, things are not looking good for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yep, it's been confirmed. Our boy Zack is actually alive in the remake for Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Let's talk about it guys. Hello guys, don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe, and hit that little bell right there so that you can get notifications every time I upload a video, okay? Enjoy. What is up, this is your boy Andy Matrix, welcome to Andy Arts TV. And in case you haven't been in this channel, this channel, um, we talk about anime, we talk about movies, we talk about geek culture, Japanese culture, and... Uh, we talk about video games, and as far as video games, mainly the video game industry, but mainly RPG games. You know, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy, and like RPG games in general. So, um, welcome back, guys. And I am at Inverse.com new site. And yep, it's actually been confirmed. It says if Zach is alive, is he in alternative reality? Well, let's find out. So here, the verse says, ever since the trailers of Final Fantasy VII Remake showed off new Dementor-like creatures. We all knew the game would depart from the original in some su surprising ways. But one of the most controversial aspects of the game is ending involves Klaus' old soldier's pal, Zack Fair. Yeah, so if you guys play the game at the end, it, when, you know, at the end of the game, when you finally beat the boss, they show Zack actually alive in Final Fantasy, in Final Fantasy VII, the original. So that's why a lot of people think the Final Fantasy VII Remake is an alternate universe in the Final Fantasy VII world. Which, you know, when you play with the whole timeline thing, it messes up the stories. I don't like timeline and time and time travel stories because it's so confusing and it just tends to ruin the story. And it's like you feel like you gotta go back and forth with things. So, and I'm gonna go to the interview uh, with Tetsuya Nomura. So it says, oh by the way, here's a screenshot. Um, this is Zack basically arriving at the, uh, you know, at the, at the cliff before Midgar. So it says, we wanted to, we wanted to have the last boss fight to take place at the highway in Midgar, which arises questions that I cannot answer. It says, game director to Nomura said in an interview featured Final Fantasy VII Remake Ultimania, he says, there is a character who's alive, which leads to a great mystery. This particular quote, Quote, makes it seem like the like the battle had to happen on the outskirts of, of Midgar for some reason. And that reason is linked to a character who's alive. Other tidbits from Ultimania claim he he went missing five years ago. And he's referred to it and he's referred to in both the past and present tense, further implying that he's MIA instead of KIA. <laughs> Said as Cloud Company begin their final construction against the Arbiter, Arbiters of Fate, in Final Fantasy VII Remake, we also see Zack in the past, with whispers swirling around Midgar, behind the battle, which they're talking about this image right here, this image. Um, let's see, it says, uh, what else did they ask him? It said, it's not totally clear yet how Cloud, Aerith, Barrett, and Tifa's actions shaped the past. Uh, yeah, it's not very clear. But there are some hints in the Zack scene that this may not be the past, but in alternate present. In the remake, Zack defeats the Shinra Keret and lives on, which leads to an unforeseen development. One fan, one fan translation of an unknown Square Enix developer from Ultimania reads, uh, In order to make sure that the two clouds do not recognize each other's existence, it is assumed that they should not exist in the same, in the same time and space. So it is an alternate universe. Yeah, so here they show you like this is Stan, the little dog, the the, the little dog that kind of like points directions. It says in Sex Presence, Stan, the Shinra pro propaganda dog, looks different than in the main timeline Final Fantasy VII remake. So they kind of made that distinction, just to kind of like show it, to demonstrate the different timelines. It said when Zack is victorious, Shinra's uh, Shinra's when victorious against Shinra in the scene. A picture of a dog Stam also also flies into into view. The same translation reads, but this version of Stam contradicts the previous design in the game. What could this possibly mean? <laughs> yeah, so 
It says, uh, Stamp is a dog cartoon, a shinra propaganda purpose. Barrett talked about Stamp on several occasions. Uh, he can be seen in advertisement graffiti, but the breed of dog is totally different on an empty bag of snacks that blows the camera in sex scene. So they're using, the, the, they're using Stamp, the little dog, to kind of like show the different universes. Okay, well, I mean... Um... I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed with the ending, but I enjoyed the game. The game was extremely good. However, if you are an original fan of the original game, then, well, you're, you know, you're just not gonna like it. it says Stan never appeared in the original Final Fantasy VII or the Zack Center spin-out Crisis Core. However, uh, Zack's nickname in the game is Puppy, when Barry calls Cloud Stan as an insult early in the game. Cloud is triggered and winks, perhaps to suggest his fake memories are being challenged. So what timeline are we looking at here? We said, let's call the original F Final Fantasy VII A and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Is if Final Fantasy VII Remake is B, so Final Fantasy VII A and then Final Fantasy VII Remake FF VII B is the remake. Okay, yeah, so see, it's a little confusing. Alternate universes, they always make things more confusing. But yeah, it is definitely confirmed. The uh, you know the developers, Square Enix, and even Tsushima Mura hinting at what he says in the um, in the interviews. Definitely, definitely confirms that yeah, Zack Fair is alive in the game. Um, in the remake, I should say, not in the original, in the remake. So it's kind of disappointing. I mean, is he gonna show up in part two, in part three of the, of the installments? If he does, it's going to be kind of disappointing because we kind of already know what to expect of the story and it looks like they're going to change the entire story for the sake of commercializing it in installments. Now don't get me wrong, I love Square Enix, I love the remake, the gameplay is awesome and the, you know what, the story is awesome for what it is, but I guess they're doing things that they would have done if, if the original game had these kinds of graphics, okay? That is the conclusion I came up with because... You know, there's a reason why, you know, they didn't do these things, you know, in the, in the, in the original. But let's say in, in the 90s, if they had these graphics, they probably would have done something similar. You know, and that's why they're kind of doing it now. Um, <laughs> you can make your own conclusion as to what you think, as to why they're doing this shit. But uh, the point is that it, I mean, the story is going to change. And I think... And, Specifically for the modern, you know, the modern version, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's all I have to say about it. Not very happy about it, but I th I'm still gonna play the game because it's Square Enix, it's Final Fantasy VII, and we all love it. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, like this video, uh, leave a comment below, tell me what you think, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for for future videos and more news. This is your boy Andy Matrix. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.